welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Aggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. Welcome to Personal Development Mastery Podcast and uh, today it's the celebratory episode 100 and uh, I'm really delighted uh, for that. So in in this celebratory episode I'm thrilled to speak with uh, Dr. Mahmoud Mauji. Mahmoud, you are an internationally recognized power speaker and peak performance business coach. You used to be a six-figure dentist in London, but uh, after losing both your dental practice and your dad in a very short uh, time, you turned your life around and made it your mission to arm yourself with speaking skills that would mesmerize your audiences. You are passionate about helping uh, people speak with confidence and authority, about storytelling, and about helping top earners to live a more fulfilling life. Mahmoud, welcome to the podcast, to episode 100. Uh, I am uh, delighted uh, and uh, privileged to be speaking with you. Awesome, Maggie. Thank you so much. This is it's the 100th podcast. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm the one who was privileged to be here. Thank you for the invite. And thanks for that great intro. Very, very, very kind of you. It is my real pleasure. And, you know, I wanted to speak with you for this uh, episode 100 for two reasons and I will explain briefly so the first one was because I know very much how charismatic you are in many ways and you know when I was thinking about that I thought of the Greek word charismatic which the the meaning means that you have a gift of grace that's the the word charisma what it means and uh, maybe we can talk whether you had to put very hard work to reveal that gift or was it just given to you as it implies. Uh, the other reason why I wanted to speak with you uh, for this episode in particular is because uh, I had the, the joy to have you as my coach and mentor for the last uh, six months now. So it feels like a, you know, a tribute of a guy to say thank you for you know, the, the effort and uh, helping to push me through some of my own boundaries. So thanks. Ab- absolute pleasure. And you've been delightful to work with. Seriously, <laughs> you really have. Super coachable and it's been great. Outstanding. Mahmoud, let's start. We have lots to talk about, but uh, I want to start first of all with uh, your story. Uh, I know very well you have a very powerful story and you uh, share it very skillfully as well. So can you tell us, uh, share with us so that the listener can have a, an idea of how you became who you are today? Just guys us through that transitional period uh, that you had, you know, that, that year, well, that day that you said that changed your life. Absolutely, Aggie. Thank, um, thank you for the question. So, you know, for me, I, I really do believe that all of us have a superhero within, within us, inside of us. And some people, you know, they go to their graves and they never, ever find that superhero. So, you know, my whole life was trying to find that superhero. And in, uh, you know, 2016, my life completely changed. So, as you know, I'm a dentist by profession, right? Just like yourself. And as I was leaving my clinic, I was in one of the clinics, I had a call from a lady called Lucy. And uh, what she told me is, the moment I picked the phone up, she said to me, you know, Mahmoud, are you sitting down? And I'm like, why are you asking me? She's, she's, um... She tries to make you laugh, right? She's a very jolly character, right? So I thought, is, is this a joke? And she goes, no, look, I just want to make sure you're not driving. I said, no, I'm not driving. She's like, okay, look, I've got some news for you. And I said, what? And she said, you know, the practice you've got, because of some NHS red tape and things like that, I got the tender taken away from me. Um, and it was like, we were just about to get that practice. I'd built that up for, you know, six years. And my share of that practice was worth just over half a million pounds. So for me, that was a lot of money. And it was like, oh my God, what now? And, you know, like, I ask everyone, when's the last time one day changed your life forever? And for me, it was that day. And I went home that day, and Aggie, my kids were, kids were very young, couldn't, couldn't say anything to them, didn't know what to do. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, I just didn't know how to cope with this. 
things just started getting worse and worse and worse. I was just like on a downward slope. And I wasn't depressed, but I thought that if this continues, my God, I'm going to get there. So whenever things for me got really bad, there's one person I always used to go and speak to in my life, and that was my dad. And you know, dads have the right thing to say at the right time. And I went to speak to my dad, and my dad always had the right thing to say at the right time. And he goes to me, look, Mahmoud, whatever you're going through right now, I'm going to give you three bits of advice. I'm like, okay. And he said, number one, never, ever, ever give up on your goals and dreams, right? So no matter what's happened, just keep going where you're planning to go. He said, number two, never stop serving people. Because the more people you can help, the more will come back to you. And number three, that he said the dots will connect down the line. Mm-hmm. And what dad meant by that is like, you know, some of us, we've gone through so, such bad experiences, Aggie, right? And we, and we think it's the worst thing ever. But later on, we realized that that was the best thing which happened to us, right? Because that was part of our journey. So that's what dad said, the dots will connect. So mentally, emotionally, I wasn't there. So I didn't know what to take by what dad said to me. For that, it was like, you know, it was... I, I didn't know what I wanted. And so um, as I was leaving, my dad gave me a book and the book was called Habits 101. And I went home and I read that book and what that book showed me is there's one, the 1% of the 1% of people, you know, the people who've made it really big, people who've done really well. What they've got in common is they've got a daily habit, which they do every single day, early in the morning. It's normally related to the health. So I said, look, what can I learn from this time? Like, what can I do? What can I take from this book? How can I apply it to myself? If I want to be this person and right now, I'm not, not there at all. What do I need to do? So I said, okay, what if I do what they do? What if I started something in the morning every single day? And I said, look, what can I do? So I used to run, right? And some of the people who may be listening to us right now, they may run, but I never used to run every day. But I said, from tomorrow, right? This is January, 2016. I said, from January, you know, from that day, I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start running every single day. Okay, and so I was out in the morning between five and six a.m. and just out, and I just guess how it felt, right? You you think it feel amazing, but it was was tough. It was horrible. It was cold. It was snowy. It was rainy. But then what it allowed me to do is, as the days went on, it allowed me to focus on me. It gave me some me time. It allowed me to just put my life into perspective and think, where is everything going? So over time, what I realized is that I'd found my, I found my coping mechanism. So whatever you throw at me, I had, I had a way to cope now that I knew that if I can run in the morning, I can cope with anything. So I threw it out there in the world, right? I said, you know, world, God, chuck me any problem you can, and I can handle it, right? Because I've got my coping mechanism. And what happens when you throw something out there in the world? The world replies, right? So I remember it was the 10th of May, 2016. It was a Tuesday afternoon, and my mom phones me. She doesn't normally call me. Uh, because I'm at the clinic. So she called me and said, my dad had been taken to hospital. So see, my dad was a speaker. But since January, he wasn't able to speak. He had a bad cough and he wouldn't go away. We'd just been to the consultants. And the consultant said, look, come back in summer. Things will be okay. They're running some tests. So I turned up at the hospital and my dad's lying there on a hospital bed. He looked well. He had an oxygen mask on him, but he looked well. So that's it. Didn't think much of it. Evening comes and it's just me and my dad in the room. My mom's sister and wife had gone home to get my dad's stuff. And the consultant walks in. And I remember this consultant clearly, right? The guy looked like he was 194 years old. He looked like flipping Yoda. And he comes into me and he says, Mahmood, what do you want us to do? And I'm like, I've, I've no idea what you mean. He raised the voice, he said, Mahmood, what do you want us to do? And I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, come outside. And he pointed outside and we took this walk. And it was a short walk, but it seemed like it went on forever. And as we went outside, he looked at me in my eyes and he said to me, Mahmood, I need to tell you something, but I'm not sure how to tell you. And I'm saying, look, just tell me, tell me what's going on. And he said, look, we can't explain why this is. Your dad become a very sick man. We have no, we have no idea how and why, but you know, something's happened and he's become very, very, very sick. And you know, there's some times when you need to call your loved ones, your dear ones, your near ones. He goes, this is that time. So I'm like shocked, right? And have you ever felt that time where you've come out of your body and you're looking at yourself? And so... For me, uh, I'm thinking, oh, my God. And I called my mom, my sister, my wife, and I explained mm-hmm. to them that we could be losing the rock of our life. And I went home that day, and all I knew how to do was run. So I put my trainers on that night, and I just ran, and I ran, and I ran. And what the running allowed me to do is the running allowed me over the next few days to focus on my father rather than on me. And I remember it was the 15th of May, 2016, right? Sunday morning, I woke up. And, you know, have you ever woken up sometimes? And something just doesn't feel right. You don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but just something, yeah. So I went for a run, I dashed to the hospital. The nurse said to me, Mahmoud, I'm happy you've come in. Dad hasn't had a good night. Right. 
So I walk into the room, my dad's got a CPAP mask on him, right? So really fast air blowing on you. Hey, dad can't say a thing, but he goes, get me a piece of paper and a pen. So I've got my dad a piece of paper and pen. And what he writes on there changed my life forever. Dad writes on there that Mahmood, it's my time to go. And I'm like, no way, Dad. Look, it's, it's my time to go and meet God. And I said, no way. I said, you know, Dad, there's so many things that we haven't sorted. So many things we've got to talk about. So, so much unfinished business. And he goes, no. And he goes, this ain't the time for that. You know, sometimes we put things off for tomorrow. But we've all got things, right? I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And some things are really important. Maybe it's the argument we've had, right? Maybe it's that relative we don't talk to. Maybe it's our spouse, right? Maybe it's a friend. And we say, I'll sort it out tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. But what if that tomorrow was never going to come? And for me, that was my day then. There was no more tomorrow. This was it. And my dad writes on that piece of paper, I give you till four o'clock. And he points four, he says four, puts up four fingers. I give you till four o'clock. And after four o'clock, I'm out of here. So that day, my dad died at 6 p.m., two hours after he said he would. And when he passed away, each and every member of my family was holding my dad's hand while he passed from this world to the next. And, you know, as the, as the days went on and I looked back on my dad's life, there were two very, very, very important lessons which shaped my life forever. Mm-hmm. You know, the first one was that when my dad passed away, he had no regrets. He was happy to go. He did everything he wanted to do. Yeah. And for me, I... I had so much regret you couldn't believe. I was in a profession I didn't like. I loved it before. The first seven years of dentistry, I loved it. The other seven, I hated it. But I just didn't know what else to do because I wanted to go out, help speak, inspire, but I couldn't speak then. I had a stutter, right? And so I couldn't speak. I didn't know what to do. And as far as I was concerned, I was just a dentist. I had no other skill set at all. It's like, what else can I do? And I thought this is going to be the life I'm always going to have. And that's the day when I said that, you know what, I want a day when I can die, when I have no regrets. And that's the day which I said, that's it. No matter what happens, today is going to be the day when I become more, do more, give more, serve more. And I go out there and become the person that I want to be, right? Mm-hmm. That's the day. That one day is when my mindset changed. On that day, from what I realize now with a very fixed mindset, is where we believe that our skills, our traits, and our talents, that we, they're fixed when we're born. That I realized on that day that, you know, given a long enough period of time, you can do anything you want to do. That's it. It's only time which is a limiting factor. That's it. So I realized on that day that I can change. I can become more, do more, give more. My traits, my talents, my abilities are not fixed. That I, They're malleable. I can change them. And that's the day when everything changed. And the second thing which really, really hit me hard was, do you know that third thing my dad said to me? The dots will connect. Yeah. And I realized the dots connected perfectly, like, like a line that, you know, if I didn't lose my business, I would have never found the coping mechanism in the running to then deal with the way I dealt with my father's death, mm-hmm. right? And for me, it hit, you know, it went a bit deeper that I thought, hold on, maybe that's not where the dots connect only, that the dots connected a lot further, that if my dad didn't die, I would never, I've never been on this podcast, right? I would have never had this chat because I've never been where I'm right now. And so for me, that was huge. And like, you know, some people may be thinking, you know, why am I sharing this with you? And the truth is that, You know, I was full of regret, full of regret, but I don't want anyone else to be full of regret. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to wait until things are crazy, like the time when someone dies or you're in a hospital before you change, but you can change now. And as I went more and more in depth about what are the biggest regrets people have, and the thing is, right, people don't regret they didn't work hard enough. People don't regret about no money, but the one thing, the biggest regret in life is, I wish I'd led a life on my terms, Mm -hmm. a life true to me, a life not governed by the expectation of others, right? And each and every one of us listening to this podcast right now, right? To some extent, we're governed by someone's expectation of us. It may be our spouse, it may be our kids, it may be our family, maybe our friends. Okay, but there's going to come a point where you won't care about what they think, but then it's going to be too late. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a great quote called, uh, uh, by a philosopher called Cooley. And what he says is, I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. Right? What does that mean? What it means is I don't base my life on what I think about me. I don't base my life on what you think about me. I base my life on what I think you think about me. Right? And that's the way we live life. And for me, it's what a horrible, crazy, crazy way to live life. You know? And that was a time when I said, that's it, no more. And I'm going to go out, but I didn't know where to go. But it was that first step. And we've all got to take that one step. We've got to jump off the cliff, right? Don't jump mm-hmm. off the cliff. Your parachute doesn't open. Mm-hmm. They don't open when you're standing still. We know that, right? And that was the day when I took the jump. And I had no idea where I was going to land. That's uh, that's an amazing uh, story, and there were quite a few things in there that uh, I wanted to 
to dive a bit deeper and uh, discuss. And I will start with uh, what you said about your dad having lived the life of no regrets, whereas you saw yourself at that time, you realized how many regrets uh, you had. And uh, I think for, for me, the biggest big takeaway there is that we're not guaranteed uh, the time. We don't know because your dad was fine and then very quickly, very suddenly deteriorated. And sometimes we... we put things off, as you say, and we expect to do them at some other time, whenever it's better or more convenient. And we don't realize the fact that we are not guaranteed any time at all. If there is any time to do anything, it's right now. There is... Tomorrow never comes. It's not guaranteed it's now, at right? all. Mm. It's, it. it's now. It's now. It's now. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, one uh, very important thing for, to consider. And then th- there was those three uh, pieces of advice that your dad gave you. So one was the, the first one for me means like perseverance, never give up on your dreams. So yeah. uh, the second was the duty to serve. And I feel like this is, I think you use that word as well, as a, a duty. And uh, of course, the dots will connect so do you want to briefly speak about each of those three like how do you think that it has affected you personally each of those three pieces of advice and maybe we can uh, relate to to something of uh, your personal you know use of this uh, advice absolutely great question okay great questions Angie. so the first one was never give up on your goals and dreams right Mm. so the way i look at that that we've all had at some point in our lives, like, you know, 1st of January is normally a time when we say we're going to do something, right? We set these goals based on the calendar month. That's fine, but we do it. And stats show that by that January the 18th, most people have dropped off. And the question is why, right? And, and, and then we get to a point later on and we look back and think, you know, why haven't I got to where, where I wanted to get to? That, that bit of advice for me was huge. That no matter what comes in your way, no matter what hurdles come in your way, no matter what comes in your way, you keep going. As long as you know you're on the right road, as long as you're doing things for the right reason, just keep going. And the more that I've looked into the lives of people who are uber successful, mm-hmm. the one thing which I realized they have, which I try and instill in me, and it's a, and this is a learning curve, right? None of us are perfect. We're never going to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about being better every day. But I always say that, you know, every night, suppose you can go to sleep thinking that, you know what, um, am I a better person today than I was yesterday? And how am I going to be a better person tomorrow? Uh, I feel we win life, right? And so for me, the one biggest thing is discipline. Discipline, right? That every single day, no matter what, you're disciplined. And that is the thing which is going to create champions. And for me, no matter where we're trying to go, the goals we're trying to hit, it's about having that discipline in you and creating an identity inside of you who's going to be the person who's going to go and get that. And what I mean by the identity is when I look at identity, I look at it like a a thermostat in your house, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine in the room you're in right now, imagine the room I'm in, right? Imagine the thermostat set at 24 degrees. What would happen, right? So I fix myself, I'm a 24 degree guy, right? So if the windows blow open and the cold is freezing in London right now, right? Yeah, okay, uh, the cold air comes in, what's going to happen? All of a sudden, you know, the, the temperature is going to drop, but then the heaters are going to power up straight away and they're going to get me back to 24 very quickly, right? right? But it works the other way as well. That if I'm a 24 degree guy, right? And if all of a sudden the heat comes in and goes up to 30 degrees, you know, then the AC is going to turn on and very quickly get it back down to 24. Life's like that, right? That, for example, we all, for example, maybe we want to have six figures, but sometimes we're a five-figure person. And no matter if your identity is set at a five-figure person, you always find a way to get back there. So my point is you've got to know where you want to go and then create an identity to become that person. Because, for example, if you're saying that I want to have six figures in my life or seven figures, right, but you're acting like a five-figure person, you're hanging around five-figure per- people, no matter what, even if, even if God the world blesses you like lottery winners, right, with six, seven figures, what happens? Very slowly, you know, very quickly sometimes, you know, everything opens and you get back down to where you are. Mm-hmm. So here's my point, right? That become a 30-degree person, a 35-degree person, a 100K person, a seven-figure person, create that identity. So for me, that's, that's, that's where that was really important. Every single day right now, it's still, how do you get the discipline to do the things that you don't want to do? And if I can go on on that, you know, there's a great story which I share. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, 
you know, this is a story about King Arthur and King Arthur sitting on this table with all his knights and he tells them to go and find the Holy Grail. And they're like, you know, where do we, what's the Holy Grail? And he said, look, you know, the Holy Grail is what's the most important to you, like your goal, right? That's your, your goal is your Holy Grail. But they said that King Arthur, how do we find that? And he goes, go into the forest, right? Yeah, and, and you'll find it in the darkest part of the forest. What does that mean? It means that you're only going to get the things you want to do where you want to get to by going to the darkest places of your life, the place you don't want to go. For me, it was my voice. It was my stutter. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the way I sounded and I had a stutter. And I, people used to take the mick out of me when I was younger. I got like, it was horrible. And that's the place where I knew that I needed to go to be able to get to my goal. So looking back right now, when I look back on that first point, that's what it's all about. It's about discipline. It's about not giving up. Mambo, did you know that uh, this thing at that time that you that your path of growth would go through this uh, starter that you have, that you had to, to go through that smash it? Or did you discover that later on? I had no idea. All right. Okay. But now looking back, the one thing which I know, and not just for me, but for every, clients and everyone, like your, your greatest gift comes from your greatest pain. Okay. So I ask you, right, what's the greatest pain you've been through in your life? And how have you come through that? Now, what, that's your duty now to go and help other people get through that. So for me, my biggest, biggest pain was the fact that I couldn't speak, that I had a stutter, that people said the mick out of me when I was younger, right, all the time because of that teachers as well. Doctors have said it's impossible to get rid of your stutter if you had it for two years. And, because, and, and I had to get through that. I had no choice. Because if I didn't get over that, I'd be coming to the world with my hand out, right? And that's no way you want to come into the world, right? And I said that if I want to go on this path, and I have no idea where this path is going to take me, yeah. right? Because, you know, you've got to open door one to get to door two and door three. No one knows where door number 10 is, right? We could still be on door number two now, right? Next to me, yeah. I might bring something like, look at this year. Look at COVID. Mm -hmm. No one expected this. I didn't expect this year to be, like, so different from last year, right? Yeah. But this is, this is another door. But it's because of the hard work we put in last year that we've been able to get to where we are this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, so no... You've just got to ask yourself, what are the hardest things? What are the things which I hate doing? What are the things which I really find tough? And then go and do them, and that's going to grow you. And I don't mean things like, if you're no good at admin or accounts, go do that. I don't mean that, because that's not going to grow you, right? But look at the things which really, like, you know, what are the darkest things in your skeleton? What don't you talk about? Like, who haven't you met? You know, are you not talking to your mom or your dad, your sister, your brother, or that friend, because they hurt you, right? They're the places you need to go. Mm -hmm. And when you start unlocking those things, then life begins to change very quickly. Yeah. It's those fears, isn't it? They're the big fears, your inner demons that uh, each of us has their own and uh, we need to face. Do you remember when we were younger, we, uh, we read so many stories about the dragon, right? Mm -hmm. And the dragon breathes out fire, right? Your biggest fear. But what's behind the dragon is the treasure. It's the treasure, yes. Exactly, so right? It's behind yeah. your biggest you, fear. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You've got to get past the fire to get the treasure. That's what life's about. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately many people, you know very well, they just uh, avoid that fear and pretend that it's not there and they, have, they lead their life uh, ignoring that fear. Um, there is one thing you were saying about discipline now and uh, I think inevitably I want to ask uh, qu quickly, I know it's a very big topic, but what's uh, your thoughts on uh, morning routines and uh, that first hour of the day and... Uh, Maybe share something that is probably unique to your morning routine that might benefit someone by listening to it or implementing it. Okay, great, great, great question, right? So you're It's off morning. topic a little bit, uh, but no, uh, it's, since you were it's talking about topic, discipline, right? yeah. I think this, what the best for me, the best, uh, one of the best ways of uh, showing my discipline to myself is by sticking to my morning routine. No matter what, because that sets me the, as, uh, for a day of discipline. Yeah. If I start my day with discipline, it's going to go like that. If I break it in the morning, then the day is not going to be the, the same. 100%. So this is the way I see it, right? That when you're on this path to grow, do more, become more, and you're hitting your biggest fears, like every day is like a war, right? You're going out yeah. to war. When you wake up in the morning, it's like you have no armor on and you're someone going into battle without any armor on. And if you go into battle without any armor on, what's going to happen? You're going to get killed very quickly. The idea of the morning routine is to create that emotional, that mental armor around you. 
So it's not really about the physical part. If you're lifting weights, it's not really about the weights. It's about the mental weights you're lifting. And, and that's what the morning routine is all about. So I'm like, you know, if you can create such a powerful morning routine, which puts your mental armor on, then you will be able to go through the day in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. My morning routine, I wake up in the morning and I go for a run, right? And one of the most important times to be able to, um, you know, I say between 5 and 6 a.m., is the best time to wake up even before. So I I used to have an issue of getting up at five o'clock. I used to find it very, very, very difficult. And so then it's like, okay, if I'm finding it difficult to wake up at five, the reason is because there's too many people in my life who are waking up after five. So that's why it's easy to wake up after five. So what if I get a new friendship circle? So I started hanging around people who wake up at three, right? And then all of a sudden five became quite easy, right? And it's like, it's this, that, you know, that, that, Five seconds in the morning, alarm goes off, you're out of bed. No hesitation, right? You're there. So for me, it's about, you know, that first half an hour of your day. Science has shown us, right? That your mind's working in a totally different way in the first half an hour of the day. Yes. And so like in your first half an hour, if you have an argument with your wife, you're going to have a bad day or, okay, or with your spouse. You wake up and you bang your head and you think, oh my God, it's going to be such a crap day, right? It does go crap. So the thing is that how can you create the most amazing morning routine? For me, one of the things which I find very important is to do the same thing every single morning. Okay. Not just the same thing, but in the same place. So, you know, there's this thing where, you know, location has energy and time has memory. So to do something in the same place every single day, when you look at the monks and when you look at people like that, they go to the same place and they meditate in the same place every single day because, you know, the same location brings in a certain amount of energy, right? At the same time every single day, right? Right? And it, and it instills it in you. So for me, it's not like, so yeah, push yourself more every day. Push yourself more. Like if you're running 2K, go 3K, 4K, or, you know, speed up, whatever it is. So I, I don't mean don't, don't do the same intensity. But for me, the most important thing is the same place every day and the same time, mm-hmm. right? And so my morning routine is to wake up. First thing is I'm out for a run. Come back. And then it's what I'm going to listen to. So people have different forms of um, meditation. I've also got this thing which I talk about, the two most powerful words that we have are the words I am. And whatever you put after the word I am, you become it. Because we know that our mind is, you know, 95% subconscious Mm -hmm. and our subconscious is all built on the beliefs we have. And how do you instill new beliefs in you? One of the ways is, is by saying something with I am with enough power that it goes in you. So you look at and see the person that I need to be in five years time or two years time or two days time. What are the biggest traits of that person? So maybe they've got courage. Maybe they've got, maybe they're fearless. And fine. So that becomes your, I am. So I'm courage. I'm courageous. I'm fearless. I'm amazing. I'm a winner. Right. And you go out there and you shout this every single morning. Right. And when you can create a morning routine like that, you put yourself in the best place to win. doesn't mean you'll win. It just means you put yourself in the best place to win. Mm -hmm. I can. Uh, I just had the image now in my mind, uh, thinking of you running in uh, five a.m. in the morning in the darkness, uh, like like uh, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone in Rocky, uh, shouting story, Rocky. shouting your uh, I am's, your affirmations in in the uh, you know the, the deserted roads of the morning. <laughs> But do you know what? For those people who don't do it, do it. Yeah. And you'll see within such a short space of time how much your life changes, right? Yeah, that it's not the money, anything like that, which changes your life. What changes it is you, right? So what I always say is we sometimes think that we've got, you know, business problems or, or business, we're stuck in business or we're stuck in our marriage and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. But what it really is, it's you're stuck in that same place, that same thing which is going on in your business. It's actually a personal problem but it's manifesting through your business. Yeah. So for example, if you're not able to close very well in business, you're not getting the sales. It's because you're in your personal life, you're not that kind of person who can maybe speak up or you're not that kind of person who can who understands people, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's manifested through your business, but it's actually in you. So when you can personally develop yourself, which is what this whole podcast is about, right? Yeah. And when you can get to that level, Right? When, you can, when, when you can understand that you're the block in everything, when everything's your fault and you take responsibility for everything and things change. And by the way, what we spoke about discipline, tell me how many flipping people are going to be disciplined to do 100 podcasts? Tell me, how many people? <laughs> how many do you know? I don't know many at all. It's, very, right? very, it's a minority. Many people don't make it to 10 episodes. It's, let it's alone a minority of a minority. Yeah. 
because everyone wants the fame and fortune very quickly. And when they don't see that coming for the first five, six, seven, ten, they'll be like, you know, okay, fine. You know, maybe this doesn't work. <laughs> but it's not that it doesn't work. It's just discipline, right? And so you are, you are you're an exact point of that, right? That look at the discipline you have. That you've kept on going every single week over and over again. Mm-hmm. One of the books uh, that I remember vividly made a big impact on me when I read it was the the compound effect, uh, Darren Hardy, which said that basically you the same uh, small action, doing it over and over and over again, eventually it compounds and has uh, some incremental results that you won't be able to comprehend earlier on, but it happens uh, naturally, it's the power of compounding, so it's uh, extremely important to carry on the discipline, the routine, and uh, I would add to what you said, just even if the, there is a lack or an apparent lack of results showing, don't let that, uh, you know, uh, discourage you, carry on, per- persevere, absolutely. You know, one of the things is that you will not, like, the hard work needs to be put in now, the results will come later, Yeah. right? Like, you know, imagine we're an athlete, right? You know, Kobe, Jordan, they didn't get all the fame on day one, they didn't. But it's the 2 a.m. Like, you know, there's there's videos out there by Kobe when he goes out there, right? Like Kobe, I love the guy. His mindset is phenomenal, right? His discipline, his work ethic out of this world. When he stands up there and he wins some of the biggest trophies of all time, he goes, you know, this isn't about the game. This is about the 2 a.m.s. This is about the 3 a.m.s. This is about the hard work. This is about when people put me down. We use that to be able to make me stronger. And it's that. And it's what you do in private will be rewarded for in public. But it's not now. But everyone wants it. I want it now. I want it now. And I get that. We want it now. But, I mean, coming on to that, when we talk about, you know, mindset, I say one of the biggest belief systems you need to have, one of the biggest things you need to believe, that all the hard work that you put in now will be paid back later on. Mm -hmm. And if you can live by that every day, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you want want the reward for what you're putting in today, it's... It's like anything like, okay, yeah, so you're a very fit guy, right? So you look after yourself very well, right? Your figure, your body shape, your weight isn't because of what you did today. It's because of what you've been doing for the last two years. But it's a cumulative effect. Like your bank balance, our bank balance right now isn't because of today. Our bank balance today is because of our actions over the last two years, right? If you want a better bank balance in two years from now, it starts today. Yes. But you'll see it in two years' time. Right? It's always a lagging. Like the results are always lagging from what you've done. Same thing, Right? And when we can really understand that, then that life becomes very different, okay? So, so many people out there, right? They want to, oh man, you know, I wish I could make, you know, six figures on Bitcoin. Or something. Well, then start today. <laughs> start today, right? You, you can't say that in a year time and hope you have it on the day. It's not going to happen like that. You've got to put something into place from now. And everything, all the results in your life, be it in your marriage, be it in your personal development, be it in your business, be it money, yeah, it's all a lag. It's, it, it's all lagging. It's a lagging indicator of what you've done in the last few years. There you go. So you start today, and that's what you've done, right? You've put this podcast out. We're on number hundred right now. You have no idea where this is going to be next year. You, you can be on the top podcast in the world next year, right? You could get a seven-figure. You know, someone buys it for you for seven figures, like they did for Joe Rogan, right? Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. But just like Joe, what did he do? Again, same as you, discipline. Didn't expect anything early on. He did it because he loved it. Did it because he wanted to. It wasn't because of the money. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. And uh, thank you for comparing me to Joe Rogan. That's cool. Uh, And when Joe listens to this. Uh, I wanted uh, to ask you one more thing. uh, And then I I want to ask you to carry on with uh, that story. But there was one other thing, and it was uh, something you. Uh, about the never stop serving people, that duty to serve. So do you want to uh, share your your thoughts or how, how that, that piece of advice uh, helped you in what you're doing? Or how did it feel different afterwards as uh, implementing it? So when I was in dentistry, what I feel as if it wasn't from a place of service, uh-huh. Uh, when I was in uni, the reason I did dentistry is number one, because it was a good status thing, doctor, mm-hmm. dentist, right? I didn't want to do medicine because I wanted a family early on and I thought I don't want to do all the nights. Okay. And for the amount you'd be earning, for me, it was about the money. But then when I got into dentistry, I really enjoyed it. And, and, and for the first 
for the first five, seven years, I was doing everything. Right? I was teaching loads of courses. I had some, you know, I was working some great clinics. You know, I've got a great pair of hands, thank God, right? So I'm, I was doing some amazing, amazing work. Mm -hmm. But I didn't come into it from the service point. I came into it from the money point. Right. And so then, then, and my dad always used to say to me, you know, we don't do things for the money. And I'm like, I, and I just couldn't understand. I'm like, you know, it's okay for you to say because you've already made it. But for me, like, I have to, I have to do it for the money. And, and you know, dad never pushed anything down my throat at all. So even when I was, when he used to take me to school at 80, uh, when I was eight years old, he used to put uh, Tony Robbins tapes on in the car. So, but he never used to drill it in me, right? It just used to be on in the background, listen. And that's, so that's the place kind of I grew up in. Okay. And you know, the magic of thinking big and how to influence you know, Del Carnegie and all that. All right. right. So you, had, be... you had those things from a very young age, then these influences yeah, 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 yeah. of the, yeah. the, the personal yeah. development. Amazing. But I didn't understand it. It wasn't really, it was just like, it's, it's one in the background, subconsciously going in, right? Without me actually putting anything in. It, it wasn't drilled down my throat, mm -hmm. right? And then when I went on this journey and how this all started is I remember that um, when when my father passed away and I was like, I want to go, you know, I just want to, I just want to do something, but I don't know what. Mm -hmm. And do you know, like there's this quote, there's this thing, right? Which they say is when the student is ready, the teacher appears, mm -hmm. right? Fine. So I was ready, right? Who's this teacher going to be? And I remember driving down the street and there was a big quote on the board, uh, on the billboard, and it was by Gandhi, mm -hmm. right? And then what this quote said is, you will find yourself when you lose yourself in the service of others. And I was like, you know, is this speaking, is this speaking to me? Like, did they put this up just for me? And I'm like, you know, what is it that I can do? How can I serve someone? Because maybe that's my path, because everyone's told me this in the past. And I'm like, you know, what am I great at doing? And I said, okay, I'm good at dentistry, but no, I'm not even going to go down that road, right? Not at all. But what am I great at doing? And sometimes we can't see our own greatness. Like we think it's just normal because that's the way we are. Like, you know, some people's gift, your passion could be baking cakes. It could be cutting grass. It could be whatever, right? But we don't see it. And I realized where what I was great at doing was running, because I did that and I did it every single day. But what running allowed me to do is allowed me to build up mental strength through physical strength. So I said, what if I could teach people that, right? And 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 then I, I came another quote um, saying, you know, um, plant, you know, plant, plant seeds under whose shade you do not expect to sit, right? Mm -hmm. And then what does that mean? It's about self-sacrifice, right? It's about serving others without wanting anything back in return. And I thought, what is it that I can give people rather than anything in return? So I said, okay, look, we've got a, um, what if I can teach other people how to get mentally fit through physical training? So I looked at my community and the Asian community and I said, well, you know, let me put a fitness class on for you, right? What do I know about fitness? But I know this because I've done it, you know, uh, you know, five sessions, no charge, turn up on a Sunday morning on 15 people. And people said to me, you, you know what, Mahmood? Asian's not interested in health. You probably won't get 15, you probably get five. You know, like people are going to be like that, right? Sometimes people are generally negative, but some people just can't see what you're seeing and they think they're being helpful, but actually not. And I said, you know, what? I don't even care if I don't get five. I just wanted one because I knew that I couldn't change the world through one person, but I could change the world for one person, right? I, like that. If I could change If I could change the world for one person, then it would be like, wow, I've actually made a difference on this earth. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we got 15 people right away. And then mm -hmm. so we opened the doors and, and I started these classes. But then I said, hold on, if I really want to grow, maybe I've got to go to my darkest place in the forest. And what's that? Speaking, right? So I said, rather than just teaching them how to run and get fit, what if I could give them a talk? I said, okay, fine. What I'm going to do is I've got 15 people. I've got an audience now, right? I've never had 15 people in my life listening to me, right? So now I've got an audience of 15 people. They're going to listen to me, right? So now they'll listen to everything I say to them because they're here, right? They can't go anywhere. So they'll obviously listen, yeah? So I'm like, what if I give them a pump talk? So what if I give them a really heavy motivational pump talk just before they start exercising with me? All right. I said, okay, fine. Yeah. So I used to give them a 10 minute talk on a Sunday morning, but I used to prep for it for eight hours on the Saturday. Right. So while the kids would go out, my wife would go, out, everyone would do everything. I'm like, no, I need to prep for this in every single, just like your podcast, right? Discipline. Like I had no idea where this was going to go. No idea. Nothing was for money. Right. But I just knew it was going to grow me. And for one year, every single Saturday, I spent eight hours 
okay, prepping for a 10 minute talk. And I used to go in and you can see it on YouTube, right? The first ones I've got this clipboard with me like this and I'm reading from it. <laughs> and then by the end, it's all changing, right? And then um, I was actually going to get rid of those videos. And my wife goes to me, don't because it shows your journey. I'm, I'm embarrassed at these. She goes, it's, it's just fine, keep them there. So I have. And, and then that's how everything started. And then I started speaking there and I started putting those talks out on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube and people started watching them. And I started getting invites from other people, not just in the UK, but around the world, saying, why don't you come and speak for us? I was like, really? I've got something good to say? You actually like, like yeah, we want, we want you to come and speak to us. And, and then that's how the whole journey started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this uh, first part of the conversation with uh, Mahmoud Mauji. Thank you for listening to this episode 100, the celebratory episode. And uh, I have a very exciting announcement to make. And it is actually a big giveaway, a fantastic present uh, I want to share with you. Uh, But it is time sensitive. So if you're interested, you have to act fast. So everyone who gives a five-star review or shares the podcast on their social media during the week of the launch of this episode so until the 21st of February that is so everyone who gives a five star review or shares the podcast on the social media will enter a raffle to win a free 60 minute coaching session with Mahmoud and myself So write a five-star review or share the podcast on the social media and then message me either on uh, social media or email me at agietagikeramidas.com and tell me that you've done it and you will enter a raffle to win a free 60-minute coaching session. But hurry because this only is valid until the 21st of February. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and rate Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts and also share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to become part of an exclusive community, gain access to unique content and at the same time support this podcast, then become my patron. The link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat. If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, join my Facebook group, Personal Development Mastery. Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdm group. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 